All right. I think uh, I think we're good. Okay. All right. Um, let me open the chat. Put it here. All right. Um, so welcome, guys, to this first recording, kind of live recording. And uh, we're going to start talking about C, the programming language C. And uh, I know we don't have many students here, but uh, again, for the students that are here, feel free to ask questions either via chat or just, uh, you know, you can unmute yourself and ask. Um, so most of you probably haven't written code in C. Some of you maybe did Python, some of you did Java. And for this course, we do need to learn how to write code in C. Um, so what you're seeing here is something called Xcode. And Xcode is a, is a piece of software, it's called IDE, that you can install if you have a Mac, if you have an Apple computer. If you don't have a Mac, what you can do is there is something called Code Blocks. Let me Google it and show you how it looks like. So this is code blocks, and it's kind of another piece of software that you can use to write code in C. So you can go to downloads and you can go to binary releases. And for Windows, you wanna, actually for Windows, the best one that you wanna install, download and install would be this one. So, yeah, so that would be that would come with everything with the compiler, um, and it's the installer. So you can just double click and it should install the the software. Um, if you have Linux, you can pick your, I you can pick a stable version. Uh, I haven't used Linux in a while, so you might have to Google it. But I'm sure if you have Linux you're familiar with how to install software on Linux. And also you can do that for Mac. So for Mac, you have the option of using Xcode and you can also use code blocks. So you can download it from here or here. Um, in fact, I'm seeing here that maybe the newer version is not available for Mac users. So maybe right now, it's more difficult to have it for Mac. There's another one called C Lion. It's the same thing, another piece of software that you can use to write code in C. Let me bring this one here. And uh, because you guys have students emails, you can uh, you can actually get get it for free. So you can install, you can download the you know, the version, this version that says, there's only one version actually of this one. Again, they do have different ones for different operating systems, but let's say you download the Mac one. Once you download it, you can actually sign in maybe using your email, your university email. Although you would probably have to create an account here. So I think what you would do is you would uh, create an account maybe or maybe apply, let me see. Um, there is a way to apply. Um, let me see. I think maybe what we should do. Yeah, if you go to pricing and if you go to special offers, you see this one for students and teachers. You can just uh, click here. And you can apply somewhere. Uh, let me see. Let me do that. Yeah, you can apply here, and you'll you'll be ac you'll be given uh, access right away. So you just fill all of that, and you have an account. And when you download and install C Lion, you can use you probably can use your credentials to log in. I think that's one way to do it. 
another way would be to log into the website and download like a license file that you would upload uh, in the software. So yeah, I would say that would be the first thing that you want to do because we're going to be spending today, Friday, and probably Monday um, talking about C, the language C. And it would be very helpful for you guys to practice uh, by writing code, of course. Now, another thing that I should say is there are um, like web compilers. So there is one called, I think, Chef something. And let me find it. Code Chef. So if you look, if you search for Code Chef, um, you can go to that website and you can pick a language. In this case, it would be C, not C++. And you can write your code here and you can run it. That's okay. The, the reason why you might prefer to use kind of an IDE is because you can debug. And debugging is actually very important when you write code. So debugging meaning you add a breakpoint, say for example here, and you run your code and then you can hover over things and it'll tell you kind of what the values of the variables are. So, so it's a really important actually skill to learn whether you're coding in C or Python or Java, debugging is very important. So you cannot do that here. That's kind of, that's one drawback for using the, the online compiler. All right. Um, so here is, uh, my Xcode. So I'm going to be using Xcode today. And when you create a new project, um, it'll actually, let me show you, go to new, if you go to file new and project, what you want to do is you want to select command line tool. That's, that's where you can pick C as a programming language. You can do next and you can give it a name here and you make sure that you, the language is C. And that's it. And that'll create a project that looks essentially identical to what you're seeing here. I'm not going to create a new project now, but that's what you would do if you want to use Xcode. So when you create the project, you're going to be seeing this file. And by the way, if you click here on this uh, project navigator, you will see that it, there's a folder here with the name of your project. And then there's this file that you can just click on once and it'll open. We're gonna only be working with one file. So we're not gonna be doing really that. I mean, if it's open, that's, that's, that's good enough. But if you have multiple files, you typically would click on the file that you wanna edit, just a single click and it would open. All right, um, so I'm gonna simplify this code a little bit uh, because I wanna start with the most basic, most simple version of, of the language. So I'm gonna say void here. I'm gonna remove the stuff here and I'll tell you what I'm doing later. But for now, I just wanna, again, uh, simplify it. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a function. So main is, is a function. And you've seen functions in, in Python and in Java. So this is how you comment, by the way, in C. This is a single line comment. So in Python, we've seen this like def main, like that. And we have a colon. And then of course we would indent in Python. We would say print, you know, hello, for example. That's how we would do it in Python. In C, it's different. In C, it's actually closer to Java. Um, the First of all, you would have to use the square brackets to indicate uh, the beginning and the end of your function. This is different than Python. And also there is this thing that's called void. In this case, it's void. And that's really the return data type of your function. So void means nothing uh, and nothing meaning this function is not going to return anything. 
So this function in Python doesn't return anything. Of course, if you want it to return something, you guys know that, let's do make sure that it's four spaces. In Python, you would say return kind of zero. So in Python, you don't have to change kind of the function definition um, when you decide to return something. You just simply return something. If you, if you want to remove the return, you can just simply remove that. In C, it's actually more complicated. If your function doesn't return anything, then you would have to have void. If your function returns a number, like for example, int uh, returns zero, then in this case, you would have to change void to the data type of the thing that you're returning. So zero would be an int, and you can say int here, and you can say return zero. Another thing that is different than Python is there's semicolons here, which you don't see in Python. So in Python, we don't have semicolons, um, almost never. I think maybe we do have them in some very special cases, but we certainly don't have semicolons when we execute statements. In, in C and in C++ and in Java, we use semicolons a lot. So you need to have a semicolon almost at the end of every line, almost. Some lines don't need semicolons, but most of them do. Um, so I'm gonna do void, So I'm, and I'm gonna remove this just to simplify, again, just to simplify it. And what we're doing here is we're printing hello world, and then there is backslash n. Do you know what backslash n is? Anybody, do you wanna write an answer in the comment maybe? Uh, okay, that's, that's great. So backslash n is a new line. And the reason why we actually would wanna do that because in C, printf does not go to the new line by default. This is actually different than Python. In Python, print is gonna print hello and it's gonna go to the next line. Printf in C, it doesn't go to the next line by default. So let's let's play and let's see what's gonna happen here. You can hit play here if you have Xcode and that'll execute your code. And you will see here, let me get rid of that part. You will see here it's gonna print hello world. Then it goes to the new line and then it prints something like code program ended with the exit code. If you don't have the backslash n, and if you play, you will see that it'll print hello world, and then right after that, it'll print program ended with exit code. So it's nice to have the backslash n. Um, so that's kind of one, one thing that you wanna keep in mind. Um, let me print something else. Let me say print if this is another line, and I'm gonna do backslash n. I don't wanna forget the semicolon. And I'm gonna do print if this is the third line. And I'm gonna do backslash n and semicolon. So if you print, if you play all of that, if you play, this will be printed, those three lines. Um, so this is, I think this is simple. Of course, you can have multiple backslash ends if you want, and that's going to print new lines. So this one is going to be three, one, three new lines. The first one's going to take you here. The second one's going to take you here. The third one's going to take you here. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, hopefully this is kind of basic. Um, now, of course, you can do other things besides backslash n, like you can do backslash t for a tab. Um, you can do backslash backslash for a backslash, because if you, let's say you want to do backslash n, let's say, let's say you're, you want to do, you want to print uh, hello world 
backslash. Let's say that's what you want to do. Um, if you want to do this, this backslash needs to be double backslash. So you can do like that. And those double backslashes will become a single backslash. And this, this backslash n will be a new line. So you can do a few things. And of course, you can kind of Google, if, you know, how to, you know, if you, if you think of something, you can try it, you can Google it. Of course, you can ask me. Um, but this is really the basics of printing in C. Now, um, if you want to print a number in Python, you can just say print a 10. That's going to print the number 10. And if you want to print a number with a string, you can say print, for example, the number is, and you can do a comma, and then you can do 10. That's allowed. Now, I don't particularly like this. I like to use a formatted string, which is much preferred, actually, and it would be the number is, and then you would do that, and you can put 10 here. In fact, if it's a 10, you can just do that. But if it's a variable, let's say, for example, num is 10, and then let's say you want to print the number is num, you can do that. That's allowed, but you can also do this, which is really the better way of doing it. So this is a formatted string. It's a string that has some sort of formatting. And the formatting essentially is, um, is this part. So, so all of this highlighted part will be replaced with the value of num, which would be 10. So that's going to be, that's going to print, this will print the number is 10. Again, uh, most of you have probably seen that in Python. Now in C, it's actually a little more complicated. So if you want to print if the number is, you know, num, first, maybe we should talk about defining num. So again, in Python, you can just do this, num equals to 10. You don't need a semicolon. You don't need anything else. In C, there's two things that are different. One of them is you cannot say num equals to 10 because you need to give num the data type, the data type that num is. And of course, num could be an integer. It could be, a, uh, we don't have a string data type in, in C. We have a character. It could be a character. It could be an integer. It could be a float. Uh, of course, in this case, it would be an integer. So you would say int num equals to 10, and you don't want to forget the semicolon. So this is how you define how you define or declare kind of variables. In this case, and initialize them because you're giving the variable the value. Of course, you could do this. You could you can. You can only declare or define by saying int, for example, um, int uh, cost, and then then you can initialize them. Cost equal to two hundred. You can do that. You can do that in two steps, or you can do that in one step. You typically don't want to do it in two steps unless. You have a good reason to do that. Uh, typically, it's just easier to do it like that. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to keep it. Let me comment it. And let me take all of that and put it at the top. So I guess if I write something that I think I'm not going to be using, maybe I'll just comment it and put it at the bottom. So the goal right now is to print the number is 10. Um, again, you cannot do something that looks like this. It would be nice, actually, but we can't. The way we would do it in C, it looks like this. Um, we would say the number is, we can have a space because we don't want to add a space. And then you do percent sign D. And I'll tell you kind of what the D stands for in a second. But after you do the percent sign D, you want to do a comma after this formatted string. So this is actually 
a formatted string, um, except that we, you know, we don't have the F for the formatted string, but really it's a formatted string because we do have some kind of formatting here that's going to be replaced with something. And here I'm going to say num. So it's really not super complicated. I did say that it's more complicated, but it's really not that complicated if you think about it. So, so this will print the number is 10. We don't want to forget the backslash n. We always like to have the backslash n because, uh, again, we don't want to print program ended right after. Ideally, it would be printed on the next line. OK. So do you see here what's happening? The number is 10. So that's how you print a variable inside uh, kind of a string. Of course, even if it's not inside the string, you still have to do that. So let's say you just want to print num. You have to do backslash D, uh, excuse me, percent sign D, backslash N, and num. So you cannot uh, do print if, I forgot the semicolon. You cannot do print if num. That's just not allowed. Um, you have to use something that looks like this. Even if you don't want the backslash n, you still have to do it like this. Let me pause here for a few seconds, see if, if anyone has any questions. All right, we can continue. Um, so another thing that you probably should know is that this can be an expression. So num right now is a variable, but it can be an expression. So you can actually do num plus 10, that's allowed. And essentially this expression will be evaluated and then it will be replacing the percent sign D. That's kind of how it works. Um, you can, of course, have any kind of expression. You can have a function that returns something and you would be printing the returned value. You can do that. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, we can also define negative numbers. So for example, int, um, you say my negative number is equal to negative 20. And then I can say print if the value of my negative number is percent sign D backslash N comma my negative number. And that's going to print negative 20 next to this string. Let me do, I do have backslash N. Let me hit play. You can see it printed the number is 20. That would be this one. It printed of course, we have 20 because we have num plus 10. And then we it printed 10, which is for this one. And it printed the value of my negative number is negative 20, uh, which, of course, is for this one. Now we can also define other data types. So there is something called float and float is for kind of real numbers, numbers that have fractions. So I can say float, for example, my float is equal to say 1.5 and I can print this one. I can print if the value of my float is, now because float is not, a, an integer, I cannot use percent sign D. Now let's talk about D for a second. I did say that I want to tell you what that means. D stands for decimal. And we know what decimal is. Decimal is base 10. And essentially, this is actually very important because you can print integers that are represented in other bases using different uh, format specifiers. These are called format specifiers. This percent sign D, these are called format specifier. Essentially, it specifies the format of the, uh, or maybe the data type of the value that you want to print. 
And D stands for decimal, which means that has to be an integer, a base 10 integer. So when, when we print it, when we print this 20, it's going to be printed in, in base 10. Now, let me ask you something. This one's not going to be the easiest question. Before we actually do this float, I'm going to comment it. Oh, did, you, did, you get, did you see this? I can do command uh, forward slash, not backslash, and it'll comment it. So that's actually handy. Um, and if I do it again, it'll remove the comment. Okay, let me comment it. Okay, so here's a question that may not be the easiest one. I'm going to say 11. And here I'm going to say print if the value of num in hexadecimal is percent sign x. So right now I have to tell you that percent sign x, of course, I think you're right now you probably have guessed, but percent sign x is going to print an integer in hexadecimal notation or hexadecimal base or hexadecimal format, maybe. We we can we can say any of that. Um now of course I'm going to do the backslash n. I don't want to forget that. And after the comma I'm going to say num. Now, my question to you is, what do you think that's going to print? I don't want to forget the semicolon. So this one is going to print num, which is 11, but I'm using percent sign x. Hmm. What do you think that would mean? B. Okay, that's good. That is a very good guess, and that is the correct answer because 11 in hexadecimal is B. We can test it. Let's hit play and see. And you can see here it printed B. It did print B in lowercase, but really it's the same. Lowercase or uppercase, it's the same. In fact, if you replace this X lowercase with X uppercase, it's gonna print B in uppercase. So if I hit play, it's gonna print B in uppercase. Again, really, it's the same, B lowercase or uppercase. So percent sign D is going to print an integer, but it's going to print it in decimal for, uh, notation or decimal format. Percent sign X is also going to print an integer, but it's going to print it in hexadecimal notation. All right. Um, so that is great. I'm glad that we did this. Now let's get back to this float. Um, so the value of my float is, now I cannot do percent sign D because percent sign D is an integer in decimal format. This is not even an integer, so that can't work. I cannot do X because an X is an integer in hexadecimal. That's not even an integer, 1.5. So I have to do something else. Of course, you can guess what that, what that format specifier is going to be. I'm going to do it first. It's F. But if I asked you, I'm sure you would have guessed that it's F. So the value of my float is percent sign F. I'm going to do backslash N and I'm going to do comma my float. And I'm going to, oops. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a trick actually right now. So instead of having void, I'm going to do, in fact, let me keep it void. Let me make sure that I do, I make one change at a time. I'm going to keep it void, but notice what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to say return. The reason why I do return here, first of all, even though we have a void, I could do return. That's allowed. I'm not returning anything. I'm not saying return zero or return, you know, a character. I'm just saying return. So, so I can do that when the return data type is void. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to skip the execution of all of this. Instead of me going and commenting all of that, I'm just going to return, and return is going to quit. Excuse me, it's going to quit the function. So all of that will be skipped. So it's kind of like me commenting it, but I'm kind of too lazy to comment it, so I'm going to just have a return. There's another thing that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning main is a special function and it's the function that runs when i hit play now of course you've seen that 
but this is different than Python. In Python, if you want main to run, then you would actually call it. You would kind of here maybe, you would come here and you would say main. Oops, main like that. So you kind of have to call it in Python, but in C, main is a special function. And every time you hit play, the C compiler is gonna call main. So it's gonna actually look for main and it's gonna call it. So ideally you would have a main. If you don't have a main function, then none, nothing is gonna execute. So you do wanna have main and uh, yeah, that's what's gonna execute when you hit play. So that's just something that I forgot to mention, although I'm sure you gathered that this is the case because you may have noticed that I'm not really calling main and all of that executed. Okay, let me hit play. Let me show you how it looked like this float. You can see it looks like the value of my float is 1.5, which is exactly what we want. And then we notice that there's a lot of zeros here. These zeros are not important. I can show you how to remove them, but the number is correct. It did print 1.5. Now, let me show you one more thing and then I can pause and see if you have any questions. So I kind of don't like to see all those zeros. Most of you probably don't like to see all those zeros. There's no reason for us to see all those zeros. So you can actually limit the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. You see this point here after the one, this is called the decimal point. And let's say I wanna do only two digits two numbers after the decimal point. What you could do is before the F, you can do point two, for example, and that's gonna print only two digits to the right of the decimal point. So if I hit play, you will see that it's gonna say 1.50. All right, let me pause here for a few seconds, see if anyone has any questions. All right, so the question, does it matter where in main you should type the return? Now, typically, if you're writing code, your return is going to be at the end of your function. And the reason why you would want to have a return or even a return zero, and you would have an int, because it's an indication that your code executed from the beginning until the end. So when you have a return zero at the end, it's almost like you're telling whomever is calling main that I was able to execute everything from the top until the bottom. That's really the, the purpose of, of the return if you, of course, are not returning something specific. Now, of course, in many cases, as we're going to see, to not today, maybe tomorrow and Monday, a lot of the times you do want to return something specific, like maybe your function is adding two numbers and you want to return the result of that addition. So in that case, you do want to return something other than zero, but it would typically happen at the end, typically. Um, of course, you can have multiple returns. That's another thing that maybe you've seen in Python. It's actually not uncommon to see multiple returns because sometimes you have an if statement. So let's say you have an if statement and if it's the first condition, you want to do something and return. If it's in the else, you want to do something and return. So you might have two returns, but you don't want to have too many returns. Too many returns is actually a bad sign. It, it kind of, it, there is a way to, to measure the complexity of your code. And co complex code is not, is not a good code. Um, and a lot of the times you don't want your code to be too, com too complex. Because of that, you don't want to have too many returns, but having more than one is not uncommon. And typically, of course, you want to have the return when you want to kind of exit the function. And typically this happens at the end, typically. 
but if you have say for example an if else and if is going to do something and it's going to quit the function and else is going to do something else and quit the function then in that case you're going to have two returns and they're not going to be at the end they won't be they can't i mean the if one the if body one is going to be probably in the middle of your function the else might be at the end of the function but typically you want to have the return really at the end so that's really the answer the reason why we have it here is only because i'm kind of i want to skip all of that and and this is you wouldn't do that when you write code i mean there is no reason for you to write all of this code if you want to skip it the only reason why i'm skipping it is because i'm kind of explaining as i'm writing but really if you're writing a program and if you write code you probably want that code to run so yeah but that's 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 good that's a good question um you know, in my next email, I'm going to ask, I'm going to encourage students to attend those, those live recordings. And because that will allow students to ask questions, maybe we can create a poll where uh, students would vote on the time that they might be available in. And maybe we can try to do those, those kind of sessions during those times. Um, because it's, I think asking questions is, is very good uh, to kind of um, not for the person that's that's asking the question but for everyone else really um, all right um so okay so this is great i think we we covered kind of integers we covered kind of negative integers we covered printing hexadecimal notation. We covered printing decimal notation for integers. We covered printing floating points. And in this course, we're going to learn why they're called floating points also. That's that's something that we need to cover. And here we learned how to, to print only um, kind of a predefined number of digits to the right of the decimal point, which which we kind of like, like this one. So I'm going to talk about another data type, and this is called character. So you can actually have a character in C. You can do char, um, and I would say, for example, letter, and that would be equals to something. Now, in, uh, in Python, we actually do not have characters. We have strings. So if you say, for example, you know, my character is equal to, um, it really doesn't matter matter whether you use single quotes or double quotes, like you can do that, or you can do, you can also do double quotations. It really doesn't matter. In Python, single quotations and double quotations are identical. Um, of course, they're identical when you do this, but when you wanna print something, like when you, when you wanna say it doesn't matter, Obviously, this one's going to print a single quote. So they're not the same, but when you use them to surround a string, they're essentially the same. Now, of course, if you want to use a single quote here, you would have to kind of escape this one like that. So there are kind of few things that you need to know, but I think, I hope that you have seen this before. Um, but what I, the point that I want to that I'm trying to convey here is a single quote is the same thing as a double quote, pretty much. In this case, it is the same. So this one is the same thing as doing that. In C, this is not the case. In C, it's different. In C, if you want to do a character, then you would have to use single quotes. Um, so here you can say, for example, C if you want, or say D. You don't want to use double quotations here. And this one's going to create a character. It's going to define, uh, declare, create, and it's going to initialize it to the value D. And of course, you can print it. You can say print if the value of letter is percent sign. Do you want to guess what it would be? 
percent sign what? C, exactly. To the percent sign C backslash N comma letter. And let me do another return. I'm going to abuse this return. Um, so right now, uh, it's going to do these three, and that's it. Let me try. Oh, it failed because obviously I forgot the semicolon. I'm going to be forgetting those semicolons quite often, actually, because I write code in Python way more than C. Okay, so it printed the value of the letter is D. Perfect. That's what we want. All right, um, let's see. What should we cover more next? There's a topic that I think we should uh, talk about. But before that, maybe I should pause, see if, if you have any questions. So just to summarize, we printed floats, characters, integers in both decimal and hexadecimal. Of course, we use those escape uh, characters backslash n and we used backslash backslash at some point we talked about the main function the special function we talked about the return data type we talked about the square brackets which are needed in c and c plus plus indentation by the way it doesn't matter of course it's gonna look uh bad if you have it like this so you do want to for readability, you do want to indent, but you don't have to. All right, um, so let's talk about the new topic. The new topic is going to be, it's going to be new. So I do want to kind of be slow explaining it. And if you have any questions, please uh, post, uh, stop me. Before I do that, uh, can, can you give me an inter, uh, a reaction? I want to see how the reaction actually how what happens if you react let me see um there is reactions right i think this is a, a new thing in zoom or do we not have reactions do you see reactions like where you can react with like say thumbs up or thumbs down yeah i'm trying to send you one i want to see if, if i see it oh i see it in the chat Okay, I don't see it. Oh, I think actually, oh, here it is. Hold on. Is that different? It It's by my name. Uh, this one is, yeah, this one is in the participants. Okay. That's at the, the reactions are at the bottom of the I screen. I see. I see. So it doesn't show here. That's unfortunate. I think uh, Google Meet shows the reaction, which is nice actually to, yeah, to have here. But that's fine. Uh, no, that's 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 all. That's okay. Um, all right. So let's talk about uh, the new topic. So we did say that variables have data types. These data types are something like integer, float, character, and we'll talk about others also. Um, we also know that variables have values in most cases. And those values, of course, could be something like 20, 1.5, or maybe the character C. Um, there's another thing that uh, you probably would guess, but maybe you don't think about as often, is that variables have size, have sizes. So when you create a variable like this one, yeah, you can think of it as a storage. It's a space that contains the character D. However, that space is stored in the RAM. 
So that's what you want to think about. Uh, that's really, it's actually a pretty accurate way. It's, it's correct, but there are details here that I'm not mentioning. But when you create a, the, the details, we can talk about those later. But when you create a variable here, this one's going to allocate space. And that space is going to be on in the RAM, in memory in your computer called RAM. Now, the size of that space depends on the data type. And this is very important. So variables have sizes that gets allocated, that get allocated when you create or declare or define these variables. Now, the important part here is variables. Can I do uppercase? I'm not yelling here, but I just want to say it's important. Variables sizes, variable sizes are based on data types. So if I tell you there's a character that I'm going to define, you can tell me what the data type is. I mean, if you know what the, excuse me, you can tell me what the size is. If you know what the size of a character is, then it's going to be the same size. I mean, whether I say char letter or char my letter, the size of letter is going to be the same thing as the size of my letter because they're both the same data type. Same thing for an integer. If I say int num1 equals to 20 and int num2 is equal to 2000, even though num2 is bigger, the space that will be allocated for num2 is the same as the space that would be allocated for num1. Now, num2 is going to be using more bits because the number is bigger, but the space that's going to be allocated will be the same. So that's, that's something kind of important to keep in mind because when we talk about MIPS next week, uh, we're going to be using those, those concepts. Now, the, the question that you probably are asking is, what are the sizes? I mean, what's the size of a character? What's the size of an integer? What's the size of a float? I mean, can we, is there a way for us to kind of see that? Is there a way for us to kind of print maybe those? And the answer is yes. There's a way to actually print the size of those data types. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there is a function. It's actually not a function, but I do want to assume that it's a function for now. Um, it's called size of. And I'm going to show you how that uh, works. And I'm going to show you um, kind of how to print the size of, of things. So you can do size of like that. And you can say, for example, int. Um, now, again, you can think of size of as a function for now. Um, and it takes a data type like this, and it's going to give you, it's going to return the size of the int in bytes, not in bits and bytes. So we know that each byte is going to be eight bits. So if, it one, if it's one byte, that means it's eight bits. If it's two bytes, that means it's 16 bits. It'll, it'll give you the size in bytes. Now, I'd like to print this. So I'd like to print the size of int. However, there's something that's actually very important here. And I want you to kind of think about, we can think about this together. For me to be able to print anything, I need to know the data type of the thing that I'm printing. So this is, I'm going to repeat that because this can be tricky at the beginning. At the beginning, it's going to be tricky. After you kind of think about it for a few minutes, uh, it's actually not that tricky. but what I said here is that for me to print something, I need to know the data type of that thing. So for me to print num, I needed to know that num is an integer. And that's why I used x or d. I mean, I could use d, I could use x. But if I don't know what num is, whether it's an integer or a float, then that would be a problem because I wouldn't know which format specifier I would use. So for me to print this one, if I tell you print this one, here's what you're going to do. You're going to be very excited, right? You're going to say, 
oh, I can, I know how to do that. I'm going to do print if the value or say the size of a variable of type integer is percent sign. And then you're going to say, wait a second, uh, percent sign what? I, I need to know what the data type of this one is before I do size of int. So let's say that's what that's what you have here, size of int. That's going to be replaced with a value. That value is going to be the number of bytes, which indicates the size of the int. However, you want to put something here that matches the data type of this one. So if I ask you to guess the data type of this function, this returned value, the return value of this function that gives us the size of a data type. What would that, what, what would be a good guess? It doesn't have to be right, right guess, but what do you think a good guess would be? An integer is actually a pretty good guess because it's the number of bytes and it's kind of very unlikely that we're gonna have a byte and a half I mean, it's unlikely. If we're going to have a byte and a half, why did we use bytes? Why why did this function use bytes instead of using bits? So it's kind of, it, it would be weird to say a byte and a half. So an integer is a very good guess. It's an excellent guess. It's not the correct answer, but it's the correct guess. The correct answer is actually not an integer. It's something called unsigned long. So unsigned means that it cannot be negative. And this actually makes sense because, so so let me go back here. You see here what, what I did. I said integer, my negative number, and I gave it a negative number because integers, excuse me, integers can have positive and negative numbers. The integer data type can have positive or negative number. Um, for for this one, even though it could be integer, it's better if it's unsigned, meaning that it cannot be negative because, because that kind of makes sense, right? You can't have size that is negative. You can't have size or number of bytes that's negative. That would be very confusing. So it actually makes sense for it to be unsigned. But the question now becomes, why is it not unsigned int? Because we can have an unsigned int. Unsigned int is a data type, just like int, except that you can only put positive numbers in it, or at least you can, you should only put, let's say should only put positive numbers in it. Um, the reason why we use long, which is a very large integer, which I'm going to actually show you what that means, uh, the size is in binary. Mm. No, not because the size is in binary. The size is going to be actually an integer in decimal. It's not going to be in binary. It's because the size could be very large. Now, this, this is even more confusing, right? It's, it's like I'm telling you that the size of a data type can be very, very large. And because of that, I need a very kind of large integer, which is called long. The reason why the size could be very large, I'm going to tell you the reason right now, and then I'm going to show you kind of the reason and, and how that works later. But the reason is because you can actually put an array here. Do you guys know arrays? So arrays, let me remind you of what arrays are. Arrays are like this, for example, my list. In Python, they're called lists, not arrays. And you can say, you know, hello. I, this is a list of, you know, strings. And if you have a list, in, in C it's called array, it's not called list. If you have an array, you're actually allowed to get the size of the array. And the size of the array is going to be the space that your array is consuming. And this could be very large. So in summary, the reason why we use long, the reason why size of returns an unsigned long 
there's two reasons. It, it returns an unsigned because it cannot be negative, and that makes sense. And return it returns a long because if you decide to give it a list here, the number is going to be very large potentially that we want to store it in a long. And long essentially is a data type that can fit larger numbers. You can think of long as a big integer. So that's why the data type of this function, again, we can think of this as a function, would be unsigned long. Now, because you know it's unsigned long, you can use the right format specifier, and it would be LU. LU stands for unsigned long. This is the, these are the two characters that you would use if you want to print a, a value of type unsigned long. Let me pause here, because this can be, like I said, it can be tricky. Um, it, it, make, it does make sense, but it's not kind of, it's not intuitive at the beginning. So I do want to pause and see if anybody has any questions. All right. Okay, perfect. Um, so we can just try to print, we don't want to forget the semicolon, of course, and I'm going to do return here. And I'm going to actually comment all of that for now. Um, yeah, I mean, whether I comment it or not, it doesn't really matter because I'm not printing it. It's not going to bother me. I'm going to keep it like this, actually. Let me hit play. Oh, I did use the I did use int here. I forgot. So let me do return zero. Okay, so you can see here I forgot the backslash n, which I again I tend to do. Okay, so here it says the size of a variable of type integer is four bytes. I can actually do bytes here. So so that means when I do this, the space that's allocated in the RAM is four bytes, is 32 bits, which is actually a lot. I mean, 32 bits is a large, it's not very large, but it's large enough to fit numbers that are very kind of very large. Okay, um, let's do other things. I'm gonna, oh, there's a, here's another trick that you can use. Um, if you do command D, it'll copy and paste the line. This is actually pretty, uh, when you write code in other languages, this can be very handy. Like for example, you can, you can highlight these two lines, like you can say like that, and you can do command D, and it's gonna kind of copy them and paste them. I actually use that a lot when I write code. So I'm gonna do this here and I'm gonna say float. Uh, let me ask a question. Do you think I need to change this one? Percent sign LU. Do you think I should change? No, that's good. That's That's exactly right. We don't need to change it because the size of a float, this function is going to return the same data type, which is unsigned long. Now, do you want to guess how big the float is? We can try. We can try to guess. Uh, how many bytes do you think a float is? It, it is not a bad guess. It's actually four. Uh, it's it's four bytes, but it's it it is not a bad guess. Now there is a another version of a float. It's called double, and double is essentially a lar a big float, a float that is bigger. Now we have to to one day in this course we're gonna 
talk about what bigger means because bigger is actually not very um it's it's it can be more than what you think when we think about numbers with fractions when we when we think about numbers of fractions bigger is could mean multiple things it could mean more precise like there is more precision or it could mean larger numbers and we have to talk about that one day but for now let's just say it's bigger whatever that means and if you print the the size of a double it will be it so that would be kind of your guess your initial guess for the float so you can see here the size of a float is four the size of a double is eight and this is actually the same thing as the size of a long so here i'm going to say the long and i'm going to put long here a long integer essentially and if i do that it'll give me eight so a long an integer is four bytes a long integer is eight bytes a float is four bytes a double which is a large uh, a large float would be eight bytes how about characters i'm i'm curious to hear a guess on that one what is the size of a character one byte that's exactly right a character that's a very good guess a character is actually one byte so if I do this, it'll say one, one byte. Let me do this. That's very good. Um, What else? There is something called short. Short is a short integer. So I can actually do that here. The, the size of a variable of type short is short. Can you guess how big the short is? How many bytes? Okay, one or two, these are good guesses. It's two. So it would be two. Uh, so the size of a, the size of type short is two. Regular integer is four. Uh, long is eight. Float is four. Double is eight. And character is one. Now, I do want to say something very important here. The size of those variables could change from computer to computer and from operating system to operating system. Now, this is something we have to talk about later when we talk about the hardware, but it's possible, it is possible that the integer on your computer is eight bytes. It's possible. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Um, and also it's possible that the float on your computer is eight bytes also. We're not gonna talk about when that would be the case. Of course, for my computer, these are the numbers. For most computers, uh, right now these will be the numbers and of course they will not change I mean for that to change I would have to change my computer for me it's not going to change so um, yeah so most likely these are the numbers that that you have also now here's a fun a fun fact instead of actually specifying the data type here you can actually put the variable name that's allowed. So you can say here, instead of saying char, you can say letter. That's actually allowed. It's the same thing. So you can put the, the variable name or you can put the variable data type. So if I hit play, it'll be one byte.
So we don't have too much time, but there is something that I want to talk about. Maybe it'll take 10 minutes. So maybe maybe we'll be we'll we'll spend five more minutes. because uh, I, I did say I think we should finish at nine. But I'd like for I'd like to talk about that topic. Uh we it'll maybe it's a good topic for us to 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 finish this today's recording because maybe it's something to kind of it'll allow you to think about a few things um and and the, this topic is kind of how many what are the numbers that i can fit in an int or in a short or in a long so if i give you and let's let's make this interactive i think this one's not going to be i think it'll be a fun fun discussion to have if i give you one bit so right now i'm talking about bits how many numbers can you, I guess, how many numbers can you represent in one bit? Two, that is actually correct because you, you have only two different shapes. There's that shape and there's that shape and each shape can represent a number. And that's it. You 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 can only have two shapes, and you can only have two numbers. How about if I give you? So that would be two. How about if I give you two bits? How many numbers can you represent? Four. That's actually correct. So so that's actually nice, right? We can represent four numbers. Why do we have four? Because it's zero 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 one one zero one one. Now those numbers could mean many things. In the unsigned world, those mean zero, one, two, three. However, in one's complement or sign magnitude or maybe another representation that you wanna come up with, they're gonna mean different numbers, that's okay. However, they all they, we always have four. I mean, we only have four. I mean, you can say I want zero, zero to mean 1000, Zero, one to mean two thousand. You can you can do that. You can come up with your own kind of representation. But the thing that you cannot come up with is more numbers. You can't. There's only four different combinations, and typically, you know, they're zero to three. They're either zero to three, or negative two to one. Uh, this is actually kind of important, and we're going to talk about that more. But let me let me write it here anyway. So typically there's zero, one, two, three, or negative two, negative one, zero, and one. So yeah, um, that's how it is. So um, so what if I have, what if I give you uh, three bits? How many eight? That's good. That would be it. I can I can list them if you want, but I don't. I think I don't have to. I think we know that it's eight bits. I think there's a slide that actually lists all of them. How about if I give you uh, four bits? Sixteen. That's good. So essentially, those numbers are two raised to the power of four, and this one is two raised to the power of three. Um, so if I tell you, oops, if I tell you that a short, I mean, I actually already told you that, a short is two bytes. So short, short data type is 16 bits because each byte is, is eight bits. So that means that's going to give me two raised to the power of 16 different combinations. Combinations, shapes, or numbers. It's the same thing. Because we have different combinations, these are different kind of shapes, and these are different numbers. And this is actually a pretty high number. I mean, two raised to the power of 16, it's, it's not a bad number. Two raised to the power of 16 is 65,000 and a half. So that's actually not too bad. So maybe kind of more than 65K. 
so which means that if I say short num equals to something, ideally this number would be no larger than this. However, for us to really know exactly what numbers we can put, we need to uh, we need to answer the question of are we using both negative and positives or just positives? Because if you're using if we're using both positive and negative, which is really what we're doing typically, then you have from negative 32K to 32K. So, so we can't, even though we have 65K shapes, we can only go negative 32K and positive 32K, which is actually not bad. I mean, this is a good number. Now, if you go, of course, to an int, an int data type is 32 bits because that's going to be four bytes. That means we have two raised to the power of 32. And that's a huge number. That's a very, very large number. It's not huge. I should say large because there is long. And maybe long would be the huge one. Long data type is 64 bits, which means that two raised to the power of 64, that's a huge number. That's a huge number of shapes combinations, shapes, numbers that can be represented. This one's pretty big. I can actually say huge, but I'm just going to say pretty big. So this is good for us to kind of think about. Um, so those data types have different sizes, which means that you can represent different things in them. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I hope that, that all of that made sense. Um, I think this is not a bad place to stop. But before I do that, are there any questions that that you want me to answer today? Okay. All right. So we can stop the recording here. Hopefully this was recorded successfully. We'll, we'll see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post this on YouTube. And uh, sometimes we're going to have those sessions. So on, on some days we'll have the, the stuff that I've been posting. On other days we're going to have this. And when it comes to coding, I actually rather that we do this. We do it live. So this would be coding in C. That would be today, tomorrow, Monday. We're going to be doing all of that coding. And after that, we're going to talk about MIPS, which is also another coding. But at the beginning, it's going to be concepts. And then at some point, we're going to switch to writing code in MIPS. So at that point, I think we're going to be doing some of those sessions. So I think I'm going to create a poll and send it to all students, see if we can find a time that makes sense for more st with more to more students. And um, that way we can have kind of more students during those sessions. But uh, for those who attended, thank you so much for attending. And I will talk to you tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, can you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you can make it to tomorrow's session, 7.30? Okay, all right, perfect. All right, so in that case, I will see you tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day, and we will talk tomorrow.